Hi everyone and welcome back to the Day Film Reviews. Today's video is my first movie review and I will be recapping, breaking down and reviewing the animated movie Wish Dragon. Wish Dragon was released around mid-June for the international audience. You can find it on Netflix and it drew a lot of attention from viewers for being an animated film made by a China team. It's a film that draws on a lot of Chinese cultural elements and focuses on the life of people living within the rapidly industrializing Shanghai. It features a Chinese cast and a person in love John Cho and Constance Wu. So in addition to the pink fluffy dragon that already drew me to the movie, which dragon was on my must-watch list. So, did which dragon live up to its expectations? Well, stick with me and let's find out. It's a story about a peasant man, a princess, and a wish-granting genie. Now you might be thinking, hey, that sounds like Aladdin. Wish Dragon is indeed inspired by Aladdin, and Aladdin was a story that originated from China. The writers have talked about this, and there has been a lot of discussions about that, so I'm going to spare you this discussion. Feel free to watch any of the other videos, and honestly, I like the retelling of a story in a new context. We've had so many Mulans, and the story is always just shifted sufficiently for it to be not sufficiently good enough. Whereas here, Wish Dragon puts the story of Aladdin in a whole new culture, in a whole new character building and character arc. I really love that this show brought a lot of Chinese cultural elements. First, we have the dragon, which is present in many Chinese folklores. They symbolize potent and auspicious powers, usually having control over some weather elements such as bloods. Dragons are also the symbols of good luck for people who are worthy, and was often associated with Chinese emperors, which is why this particular Chinese animal was so appropriate for a tale on worthiness and greed. I imagine the dragon was going to be like this, which is why I absolutely love how they put a new spin on Chinese dragons. Long is fl pink, fluffy, and has the most adorable paws and a sassy attitude. One of my favourite parts of this movie was the lion versus dragon fight. In Chinese culture, we have lion dance, which is often performed during Chinese New Year. Dance to drum beats and involves amazing balancing tricks. I love how they included the lion dance in such a ridiculous moment, with Long becoming a paper animal as well, and just reacting this celebrated scene is Chinese culture but in a comedic, approachable way. Another element that was really nice to see and is I think the fundamental aspect of Chinese life was that community spirit we saw in this community. From the way of portraying love through acts of services, through the simple act of cooking rice instead of saying I love you, to having street vendors, or those very nosy aunties and uncles, it was very nice to see such a relatable representation of a community. The show's portrayal of Lina's father's hope to move away to seek a better life is, I think, a, a common mindset that is shared by many youths in these communities to hope to chase a better life elsewhere. And it is in these rapid changes which are taking away certain aspects of these communities. For example, one of my greatest worry is that in the future, we will no longer see street vendors, night markets, or for Singapore, hawker centres because so many workers are getting older and these jobs aren't attractive to the younger generations. The movie also did a nice job portraying the Shanghai Shikumen neighbourhoods. Shikumen neighbourhoods that really translate to stone warehouse gate. They are also known as lane houses because they are these two to three storey houses arranged side by side right next to a long lane. They are traditional buildings with a combination of traditional Chinese architectures with Western influences. They used to be very popular in the late 19th to early 20th century, but today very few people live in these houses because of rapid development and population growth. So many people live in high rising apartment buildings. Overall, I love the portrayal of the street views. They are a bit empty and surprisingly widely, but they are still a really great attempt to portray the street views in Shanghai. There were also many historical and cultural elements which were shared rather briefly within the show itself. There was the terracotta army, the use of jade pot, because jade was such a favourite element for many emperors. There was prawn crackers, which I'm not exactly sure why they chose prawn crackers specifically, but it is a good and popular snack, and it was nice to find these little easter egg moments in the movie. One thing about the movie that I really want to talk about is the use of Chinese instruments, which was just great. It was a really nice touch that Wish Dragon used Chinese instruments in, within a Chinese film, which is surprisingly rare for Western portrayals of Chinese movies. And they did switch up a bit by putting the Chinese instruments through synthesizers, but you can still hear quite distinctly the Chinese instruments in their music. So there were a few Chinese instruments that they used. Uh, there was the pipa, which is what the god is holding, and this is a plant instrument that is pear-shaped with wooden body and four strings. They use the sheng, which is a moth blown free reed instrument with vertical pipes, and it is used to play very rhythmic chords, which creates very bouncy feelings. And it can also be used to create long, beautiful instrumentals. 
You use the run, which is a nude with a fretted neck a circular, with a circular body and four strings. They also had the two scene, which was used mainly for their bad guy scene. And this is instrument is one of my favorite Chinese instruments. It's a long horizontal plug string instrument, and we see uh, in a lot of Chinese Usia or Sinsa films. They're very elegant and uh, portray really, really nice sounds. Something that I didn't really like about Witch Dragon was the antagonist, because the antagonist wasn't really someone who contributed to the story plot. Without him, I think that they would still have realized that he was wrong eventually, and that Lina and her father would still have returned to the community. The only major contribution was showing that Lina's father was still kind hearted, so by, put, by creating this antagonist, they allowed Lina's father to not play that bad guy role. And, but yeah, because the antagonist was so um, one dimensional and not particularly useful to the plot, I wasn't really, really invested in the final fight sequence at all because there was no reason to doubt that the bad guy would fail and Long's sacrifice was quite expected as well. One thing I did enjoy having was Long's insistence on returning to the mortal realm and arguing with an immortal. It was a very cute moment. Having said that, one thing that I was a bit confused about was Long's agreement with the immortal, having to serve another 10 masters before returning to the spirit realm again. I guess that the writers wanted to portray just the extent of Long's learnings and sacrifice to show how much he has changed, but the whole point of him having to serve as a witch dragon was to learn the meaning of life, which he did. So is his other 10 extra masters just a punishment for him? The movie could have ended with Long just returning to Grand Detour, which was then. Maybe he could have ended with Long just being so insistent and annoying that the immortal gives up to Long's persistence and lets Long temporarily descend to Grand Din's wishes, rather than having to punish Long for his sacrifice and for him learning to the, the true meaning of life. Yeah, but despite the expected and slightly confusing ending, I did really enjoy the movie. I think the characters had really nice arcs, they had great character developments. For Lina, she was portrayed as a very realistic character who was consistently humble but still realizes her responsibilities. I love that Lina and Din's friendship was portrayed as an innocent friendship rather than something more. The animation for the film was really nice, I love Long's whole features. It was very well developed, very cute and very unexpected for a dragon within even within an animated film, I think. Overall, I think it is just a very feel-good movie. Let me know whether you agree or disagree with any of my points, or just let me know your thoughts about the movie below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and press the like button. Thank you!